Welcome to the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. It's Jeff DeVeronic and Steve Bradley talking a little, maybe the first time ever, maybe, uh, Coach Orman. I'm not sure. York Golden Knights basketball uh, with Coach Ed Orman in his 17th season as the head coach of varsity. And also top scorer Maddox Timothy from the defending Class C3 champions. Guys, welcome. Coach, give me a, give me a check, a fact check here. Have I had you on the show before? I have, no, right? I don't think so. Nope. I, I, Unbelievable. Obviously, I, when last time I was talking to you, you were still working with the DNC. That was ages ago. But you know what? <laughs> we got a pavilion guy on from a small school like Steve Bradley. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, we have a lot of small school guys. Though, so you can attribute that to me. Uh, and, and York is purple and gold. I know they, they merge for some teams, but uh, they, they're pretty competitive when they're not merged. So purple and gold is always good, Jeff. My dad was also the superintendent at Pavilion School for 24 years, so. Small world, Jeff. After my time, but I remember his name. Well, as we record this, uh, you'll probably be watching this after the game against Livonia. We'll see. But, yeah, the, the Knights, Golden Knights, are off to a 7-1 and one start on the season, uh, coming off a 62-47 win uh, over Leroy on Monday. And, uh, Maddox, you had a, a typical uh, uh, game for you. I, I know I wrote it down. 22 points, just a little over your average. Um, coach, let me ask you to start with you. Uh, how many guys back as starters from the championship team? Who are they? And, uh, how many guys overall back on the squad? Uh, we had three starters, like starters who started in that game. Um, Maddox was obviously one. Jake Pangrazio is a kind of a three, a swingman, six, three, six, four, uh, returner. And then Tyler Brady, who's also a junior number 15, um, 14 this year. Um, good player, but those three turned. And then uh, Joe Bauer also as a junior was a key part of that team. And, uh, you know, Connor Rodwell too, actually, who started, I think may have actually started the championship yeah, game too. So maybe we had four back from the start of that game. Maddox, um, three-year starter. You had the, the glory of winning the section five championship and being the MVP last year. So you know what it takes to get there. You're halfway through your senior season. What do you like about the way your team's played so far? Uh, honestly, I'm, I really like how our defense has improved this year so far. Like, we took, like, a huge step forward. Like, I was worried about that coming in. Like, I already know our team could score the ball. It's just, like, if we can stop people enough to, like, keep them under points. Coach, break break him down for us. If you're a college scout looking at this guy, what what's, what is uh, Maddox's uh, – what are his strengths, not only as a basketball player, but as a, as a, as a, as a leader? Uh, Maddox – Maddox is, is a quiet leader, um, but he speaks with his game. He, last night, he had, you know, 22 points. Uh, he's the kid, a lot of times you walk out of the gym and you think, yeah, Maddox had a nice game tonight. You open up the book, you're like, oh, he had 28. He had 34. <laughs> um, but maybe, maybe the best thing about Maddox is he's just as good a leader if he scores eight. And somebody else scores 25. And we win. Uh, that's what we preach. Um, you know, he's, he's well-rounded. He's big. And the, the final thing about Maddox is, realistically, he does his best work in the biggest games. Um, the brighter the lights, the more things seem to slow down for him. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wish we had reclassed him and had him as a junior like <laughs> the other four starters. But we're going to enjoy every minute this year. So Maddox, that's quite a compliment from coach. And, and see, sometimes, see, he was nodding. He was nodding as coach was saying that. I, I know. So w- where does that confidence and that, you know, ability to want the ball, to perform there, to, to take the last shot, does that come from, you know, just practicing in, in, in your game all the time? Or, or why are you so confident to, that you're going to excel on the big stage? Yeah. So like I play a lot of like AU in the summer too. And so that was my confident. And it really like last year, I took a like really big step from sophomore to junior year. Like I was playing a lot better then, and I was just like playing like really good in these big games. And like I've continued to, that to senior year. So Jeff, let me follow up on that. Um, you know it's great. You know that you have your season during the winter, but a coach will, will agree with this. Any coach will. Champions are really made in the off season. It's when you put the work in with your teammates. What do you and your teammates do in the off season so that you can be successful from November to March? Uh, in the summer, we go to a ton of camps. Like this year, I think we went to Oswego camp, camp in Oswego and Lemoyne, I think. And then we played like a ton of summer ball against these other like schools that are way bigger than us. And that was really good competition for us. 
you guys started the season with a bang. Uh, well, actually, let's go back to last year real quick. Uh, 55-42 over Cal Mum uh, in the championship game to deny Coach Dickens a brick on the way out the door in retirement. And how well do you know uh, Dan Dickens? I'm sure there's been lots of battles over the years. And um, th was there any twinge of sadness from you that uh, he couldn't walk out like Al McGuire did uh, with, a, with a title? Um, Coach Dickens is probably one of my best friends. His wife, Kate, Molly, and my wife, we travel all over. We're both big Bills fans. We go to a lot of out-of-town Bills games together. Um, a little even more history to that, Coach Dickens had – had my number the last few years. He had beat us twice in the finals in both uh, 19 and 20. Um, and then he beat us in the semifinals of the COVID season of 21. So any twinge of feeling bad was kind of gone because if we hadn't beat Coach Dickens last year, I like don't think I could have went out to eat with him. He has he has some some good uh, fodder on me, and now at least I can say, hey, but I sent you into retirement. So, uh, <laughs> and that was four of four in a row, right? Like the Buffalo yeah. Bills losing the big yeah. game against them. Yeah, you aren't getting Maddox. What's your best memory? I mean, I went holding the trophy, but uh, that game, uh, the thirteen point deficit or, or margin of victory, was it close throughout? Did you guys pull away late? Tell me about that game a little bit. Uh, honestly, that game was like a lot like low scoring than like we were like used to and stuff. So like that was a lot of like, really defensive game. And uh, I'm pretty sure it was really close throughout. Like the, the whole first half, it was close. I think we were still winning in the halftime. Then the third and fourth quarter, I just got bigger and bigger. And like they just like gave up with like, or started like pressing and fouling for like two minutes and a minute left. And like, we just knew we were going to win that one. And we're kind of at almost the halfway point in the season. Not quite. You're eight games in. Um, what do you like about what your team has done so far? And what areas do you want to see them grow in the next month to prepare you to make another run in the postseason? Well, I'm, you know, I'm really happy. Like Maddox said, we're definitely ahead of where we were last year at this point, defensively. Um, last year, they couldn't take a scouting report at this point and adjust to it. Uh, you know, they, they couldn't take away people's strengths and give up their weaknesses. Um, we just weren't that, you know, maybe that mature. We're a little bit more mature. That being said, um, you know, these guys, I, I'm not the easiest person to play for. I, I will totally admit that. I'm intense. Uh, I love basketball. I tell them all the time, like, they might love it. I love it as much, if not more, than any of them. And I, I keep pushing them. Like, at this point in the season, there's a lot of people who look good. But the, the people who are going to be great are going to grow in the next six, seven weeks and are going to keep improving throughout the postseason. Um, and kudos to these guys. They did that last year, but I keep telling them uh, they're sick of this. You know, last year in a quarter will get us a gumball. You know, we we got to we got to focus on this year and pushing through that ceiling. Well, I'm going to throw my hands in the air because this guy's a quote machine. I should have had him on. One, he should be an analyst. When, if you guys ever get out, knocked out early from sectionals, we're going to have you on to break down brackets with us, Coach. Um, let's take a quick break. Come back, talk more York Golden Knight basketball right here on the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. The best three things here at McQuaid are definitely the sports, the brotherhood and the service to community. I think that's a really big important thing that McQuaid stresses, which is part of creating a better and great man. You definitely feel a connection with your fellow students here. It's being all guy school, you're able to relate to each other on a personal level and everyone's very welcoming here with open arms and willing to be your friend. While we celebrate 140 years of serving our community, the kind of delicious joy that lasts a lifetime. We look forward to serving you for 140 more with hardworking, wholehearted, passionate people who will help shape new memories for generations to come. You don't choose to get hurt at work. 
but you can choose the workers' comp attorneys at Connors & Ferris to fight for your money and medical benefits you deserve. With over 20 years of industry experience, we will give your case our undivided attention so that you and your family can focus on your recovery. So call Connors & Ferris, the workers' comp attorneys, dedicated to fighting for injured workers' rights. Connors & Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Are you looking for a place to create your greater story? Roberts Wesleyan University was voted the best undergraduate program by the Rochester Business Journal Reader Rankings in 2022. We're honored and humbled for being recognized as a top winner. Within every student is a transformation story in the making. At Roberts, you'll find an academically inspiring environment led by supportive, high quality professors. You'll build upon your education and have opportunities to pursue your interests explore career opportunities, and shape your future forward at Roberts, a liberal arts university anchored in Christ located in Rochester, New York. Apply now for fall 2023 at roberts.edu backslash apply. We'll get back to you within 24 hours once you submit your application. Bring your greater story to light at Roberts Wesleyan University. Hi, this is Jeff DeVeronica. I'd like to tell you about my friends from Doyle Security. We lost my father-in-law a few years ago, and that meant my mother-in-law was gonna be alone in her house. One of my first calls was to Doyle. Doyle has an award-winning burglary detection system, and that gave her peace of mind again. It gave her comfort. These days, you can't put a price tag on that. Whether it's for your family or yourself, at any stage of your life, Doyle is there for you. For seniors, Doyle offers a personally enabled GPS emergency response system. They have a full array of smart systems, including fire and carbon monoxide detection, security cameras, and more for your home or business. More than 35,000 families and businesses rely on Doyle every day and every night. Family owned and operated for more than 100 years, you don't have that kind of staying power unless you're doing something right. To learn more, call 1-866-GO-DOYLE or visit godoyle.com. Local McDonald's operators care about our local schools, teams, and student athletes. That's why they support the return of high school athletics in the Rochester area and around the state. See you before or after the big game at McDonald's. Welcome back, Section 5. Game on! Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do. Whatever motivates you, G&G &G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G &G Fitness, your goal is our goal. Welcome back to the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show. Jeff D. Veronica, Steve Bradley, and a shout out to our producer, Joe Brott. He's the guy that makes us look really good on these shows, cuts it up, puts the graphics, and uh, he's a real team player. So thank you, Joe, for that. With us on our special tees, Skype hotline, Coach Ed Orman and Maddox Timothy. Uh, I didn't get it reversed, Maddox. That was close. I almost uh, – the does any – do you get that a lot? It's, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting first, uh, first and last name, but do you get a lot of mistakes with your name? I used to, but like not as much anymore. Because yeah, you made a name for yourself. All right. Yeah. Um, Steve Bradley, you're, you're a Livingston guy. Or, or you're a Genesee region guy. Throw it to these guys for a good one. So, Jeff, Coach Orman played it at York, too. At Alma mater had some good teams in the mid-90s. So, really, Coach, you've probably been around basketball in that region for, for 25 years. And, and I've been in those gyms, your gym, Livonia, Warsaw, those places where the community really descends on it. And, High school sports takes on added meaning, especially in those one stoplight towns. And uh, I'm just wondering, you know, what kind of changes you've seen in the last quarter century from from you played from when you played to now when you're sitting on the sidelines. How how has the game changed and evolved? Um, well, the game the game is faster. Kids are a little more skilled. Obviously, it's hard to not be jealous of these guys. The amount of opportunities they have to play AAU. Um, back to your point of being in a small town. When I grew up, you know, you, you hardly knew anybody from a town near you. Um, there was no no Instagram, no Snapchat, nothing. You didn't you didn't like the guys in the town no, next to you, right? Exactly. Never, no. too. And even uh, if you did know them, you wouldn't talk to them. Yeah, you found that out when you were older, finally, and you were able to be in social places that they were, you know. 
Um, so that's the big thing is the kids are different. They know each other um, and they have a lot more opportunities than we have. Um, the other thing is York, when I was in high school, was a football town primarily. Uh, mm -hmm. We were known for our football coach, Kerr, who I was lucky enough to coach with, a Section 5 uh, Hall of Famer. We were football. And, um, you know, from about 2012 on, we've kind of become a basketball school. I think we've played in seven sectional finals since 2012. We've played in nine semis. Um, you know, we it's really changed. We've become the, the small town with you drive down the road and you see every little kid dribbling a basketball. That is by far the most rewarding and cool thing. So just to follow up on that, Ed, you know, most small schools, there's ebbs and flows and it's hard to be consistent. Do you have, you know, a, a system in place? I'm honey, or Livonia had the bouncing bulldog, you know, for years under Tom Downey, they built that success. What, what is it like on the lower levels? How soon do kids start getting involved in the, in basketball in York now? I'm pretty sure I coached Maddox and little dribblers, um, you know, as little kids uh, starting kindergarten. We have, I'm fortunate in the boys basketball program, we have the creme de creme, the hands down, no doubt best youth basketball coordinator in section five, probably in New York state, a guy named Tracy Peglowski. He runs, he's responsible for starting the entire GLOW Youth League. Um, they run our, we're a motion offense. We're European basketball. Everybody plays, everybody shoots. Um, nothing better to play basketball than be able to shoot the ball. And we start that in third grade. I mean, my little boys are up playing right now and I walk in the gym and they're doing the same drills that Maddox and these guys do as seniors. You know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's just the most special thing about being a part of this program. You know, it's really cool. You're coaching at your alma mater where you grew up. Uh, there was a faction of my school and my, my couple of my coaches were younger guys, probably when I was a senior, they were 28 years old. And they used to say to me and one of my best buddies, like, you're going to come back one day and want to coach here. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And I tell you right now, I, I'm jealous, man. There's part of me that wishes I was coaching basketball and, and baseball at Canastota High School uh, in, in Section 3. Um, that's, that's really cool. Maddox, let me ask you about your coach. He said he's intense. He said he's not easy to play for. Um, he sounds like he could be a loud guy here now and again. Some, some parents don't like their kids coached that way. Some guys don't. Some players don't like to be coached that way. How do you respond to that? Um, and does it help you or, or, or does it get in your head sometimes? Uh, I honestly really like him. He's a great coach. And uh, I think it helps me. Like even say like we're up at a, we're in a game and we're up by like 40 or something and someone makes a mistake. Like you're still going to get on you. Like we we're trying to like push ourselves to like win sectionals and even go farther. And like he coaches everyone on the team the same. Like we make a mistake like he's on you. And it's like he just like wants to help us so much. Maddox, how much of an advantage is it that when you start playing in third grade, you're doing the things that you're going to need to do in high school? And has it made the path easier that, you know, you know, you're doing the things that I'm sure there's players you looked up to that, you know, were, were the players in, in, on maybe on the 2012 team. They, they were the guys that you looked up to. And now you're one of the guys that the little kids look up to. How much does that help that sense of community you have? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I remember, like, when I was little, I came to, like, every single varsity game, and I had a ton of, like, favorite players, like, throughout the years. And now that, like, knowing that, like, I'm, it's, like, some kids' favorite players, like, it honestly means so much to me. <laughs> and you I, must be getting a lot of attention from defenses. I know you averaged about 17 a game last year, 10th team All-State. Congrats on that. That's pretty cool. Um, you put a 28 spot up on Evoca Pressburg, the defending class D state champs in the opener, a big win for you guys. Um, were you already getting special attention defensively last year or has it really picked up this year where people are trying different things to just stop you? Um, it started like at the end of last year when I started playing like especially well like in sectionals like I had like a really good run at sectionals uh, and in this year I've gotten some attention definitely by teams. I remember uh, against Prattsburg actually they were pressing us and they didn't guard the inbounder they just double teamed me off the press and didn't let me catch the ball. I just remember that specifically. Do you see many box and ones? coach and and no we saw we saw a little bit one like we saw one but like we already got by a lot on them and like it didn't really matter. we're we're extremely balanced though i have six kids who've already scored in double digits 
in a game this year. Including a freshman. And me too. I know Parker did. I saw Parker did. Including a freshman. And we have another freshman that it's only a matter of time till he scores in double digits. Um, so we're really, we're really balanced. And like I said, the most, the most incredible thing about these guys is they do not care who scores. If Maddox scores six tomorrow night, we beat Livonia. When we get down that locker room, his head's not going to be down. He's not going to be pouting. He's going to come out. He's like, Hey, it was somebody else had a great night. Us, we got the win that, I mean, after every game, we say that, you know, the only one that matters is did we get the W and, uh, that, that goes a lot to speak to these kids' parents, these kids' families. And uh, if you ever saw us play, I mean, last night we played in Leroy, and I probably had six people hit me up before we got out of the gym saying, wow, your chemistry is incredible. Your kids are so fun to watch the way they share the basketball. And how, how do you get them to do that? How, how do you – that doesn't usually happen. That's not – you don't just roll the ball out and it happens. How do you get them to do that, to want to share it? The group that Maddox watched, the kids that he talks mm-hmm. about – that's how they played. Like, that's the way we play. And it's become the thing that we know that if we do that and we, we play together, that's always a huge advantage in this, in this culture of me, me, me. If we're we, 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 we got a big opportunity on people, you know? So Steve, I think we're going to have to go from Byron Burgeon and then hit up York sometime. A Byron Burgeon, York the- doubleheader. That would be fantastic. That could be that could be in the way making. We could be uh, heading. We could be on a crash course with them in some ways. Them and Pembroke, it looks like at some point. So, Ed, I'm, you mentioned your dad was an educator, and you won numerous Coach of the Year awards. You've been there 17 years. You've won two sectional titles to, to date. Who are your big? And you mentioned Coach Kara, who, who was the football coach at York. Who are your other coaching influences? Um. Well, my big my big ones are. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of uh, Pat Summit. Um, I actually, one of the coolest things I have hanging in this office, is my cousin was at Tennessee and got me an autograph when I got my job from her that says, congratulations on your first job. Um, I love her book. I'm a big fan of Dean Smith. I'm a Carolina guy, obviously. And then my dad was a JV basketball coach until he became an administrator. Um, so I spent a lot of time with him. And we, like I said, I mean, for fun growing up, we would drive and watch Art Long play against McQuaid. You know, that's that's what my family did. Um, to this day, the Ormond's favorite holiday is March Madness. Um, not Christmas, not New Year's, not Easter, it's March Madness. So it's a way of life with our family. Our girls coach is my first cousin, Caitlin Kolb, scored like 2,000 points in her career. I mean, it's just- Honey, 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 honey. No, right? she's a smart girl. Who am, I, who am I getting confused with? There was a girl from Honey Oye that yeah, There was a cold. There are colds from Honey Oye. Boy, that, I, I would have bet that was her name, Caitlin Cole. But she's the daughter of Brian Cole. The, the, oh, I don't know. Uh, so you're a Syracuse guy, though, too. You like Syracuse, right? Or no? I like Syracuse. Okay. You mentioned Dean Smith. You got the blue tie on. I got to at least mention this. My favorite Dean Smith story, because you, you know, I used to cover Syracuse. Coming back from the Final Four, National Championship, it's like, Eight o'clock in the morning, we're on a connection through Charlotte. Me and some of my buddies have gone to the Final Four. I got to actually work it for the Democrat and Chronicle. I see Dean Smith by himself, sitting by the bench, alone. Now, it took Dean a long time to win his first title, right? It took Bayham a long time to win his first title. I say, I'm going to go ask Dean Smith if he can give me some perspective about what it felt like for him, because we just got Bayham's perspective last night, right? Dean's famous for being a smoker, right? He's smoking on a cigarette. Walk up, hey, introduce myself. Said, I want to ask you a question about you and Coach Bayham, the parallels in regard to winning your title after a while. Can I, and no one else around. It's like eight in the morning. Takes the drag out of a cigarette. Nope. No, thank you. And that was it. That was my only interaction. <laughs> so, oh, well. That's how it goes, right? Uh, Steve, anything else for the York Golden Knights? This has been a lot of fun. Well, Coach Orman just talked about how much he loves basketball. Class C2, he alluded to this a little bit. These small schools, Jeff, Section 5, one of the largest geographic sections in the state. One thing I love the most about these small school brackets is that teams play teams from outside their league. You get to the larger brackets, you're seeing rematches for a second and third time. You look in C2, Bolivar, Richburg, Pembroke, Red Creek, York, top four right now coach 
little scouting report on, on how C2 might come together or how, di how difficult that road to another brick might be? Well, it's always difficult. It's the game of basketball and it's one and done, right? I mean, that's what makes, that's what makes it amazing is it's one and done and one good, one bad night and you can be out. So um, the thing is the GR teams, we do have a little experience with. We play in some of the Attica and Batavia spring leagues. Um, we beat Bolivar last year in the quarterfinals on our run to sectionals, but um, those teams are all good. I mean, we, that's like I said, the next six or seven weeks, we got to get better and, uh, you know, forget about last year and focus on, on taking care of this year. Well, gentlemen, it's been a lot of fun getting to know you both a little better than I had in the past. Um, and Max, Timothy, nice to meet you, young man. Good luck uh, now and in the future uh, beyond the high school ball. I know you want to play in college too, so good luck. And the Division three program, I think would be happy to have you. So lucky to have you. Coach Orman, good talking to you. Thanks for being on our show. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. See you guys. Right, York see. Golden Knight Basketball for Steve Bradley and our producer, Joe Brott. I'm Jeff DeVeronica. Thanks for watching us on YouTube right here on the Connors and Ferris High School Sports Show.